Hey golfers, Danny Farrell here from Second Swing Minute Tonka with the wedge doctor, Larry Bobka. Today, it's bounce day at Second Swing. Larry, how are we doing this morning? We're doing good. Uh, you know, we've got a bag full of Vokey wedges. Uh, he's got some of the most uh, varied soles and grinds, and it's the perfect line of wedges to talk about bounce. Uh, Danny, what kind of bounce do you play? Well, for me, I'm on the low side. I'm playing M grinds uh, just because I'm shallow. Oh. Um, I play firm conditions, some of the private tracks around here. Is that shallow in life or just in your golf swing? Wouldn't you like to know, huh? <laughs> anyway, let's get back to uh, the golf equipment per side of things perfect. today. Perfect, perfect. And I tend to play high bounce wedges. Little bit difference between the ages of the players and how we were taught. So. The bounce, what you choose, has a lot to do with your technique and your instruction and how you like to play shots around the golf course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know for me, playing more of the low side of things, kind of the younger generation, um, how we're taught to play the game, a lot of it is square face shots, just like the old timers as well. Sorry, Larry. Yep. But just like them as well, right? Where we hit things with a square face. When I play, even though I have a, the same wedge, I've got a versatility of different shots just by altering my hand position, right? Does a couple things, loft and bounce. I've got six different wedges with one in my hand. Yep, and you probably play more wedges in your bag, three or, f three or four? Absolutely. Okay, mm -hmm. I grew up playing one wedge. Back in the day, it was a sand wedge. It was 55 or 56 degrees. So you learn to hit all the shots with that wedge. Back then, soles were, this is a narrow sole compact <laughs> compared to wedges you play in the, back, in the past. I mean, Wilson Dynapower 58 sand wedge is considered one of the best wedges ever. I mean, it looked like that wide, it was heavy, wedges were much heavier. Shots were played much different back then. But being older now, I have a hard time getting away from that. So I like to play. But Vokey and other companies like Callaway, TaylorMade, they have wedges for me to play. So there's a lot of different wedges for everybody. And that's why we always talk about coming in and getting fit, talk about your technique, talk about the golf ball you use, whether you use a spinny golf ball, a non-spinny golf ball, it really can help your short game. We want to talk a little bit about 60 degree wedges, and we've got different bounce options here, okay? Danny's holding a low bounce and a mid bounce, I'm holding the high bounce wedge. It's about conditions, it's about technique. If you play in firmer conditions, you'll see on the PGA Tour, players tend to play with a little bit less bounce. But you have to remember, they play in very firm conditions. Their bunkers ha don't have a lot of sand. They're also consistent from week to week. so. When you're playing in those conditions, it's easier to play with low bounce. It's very hard to go out to your local muni and play with a low bounce wedge when the sand is going to be this deep, okay? You got to remember, a bunker shot is the only shot in golf. We don't hit the golf ball. We just displace the sand to make it come out. So I like to recommend, especially someone who plays in varied conditions like that, either go medium or high bounce, okay? What about, what about swing types, Danny? Swing types. So I'm going to start on the shallow side. Imagine that. No. You so know <laughs> that well. <laughs> so shallow guys out there, just like me, um, I tend to come in and don't leave much of a divot out there, right? I'm a greenskeeper's best friend or maintenance guy's best friend because you don't know I'm out there. Right. right. I barely take a divot. Grooves always look nice and fresh in the club. But the reason why... I play something with low bounce, think of bounce this way. It's forgiveness getting in and out of the turf efficiently, okay? For players that are pretty shallow, I want to have that leading edge pretty sharp. That way I get down to the ball first, maximize the spin, and then let it come out. For players on the flip side, Larry, I'll let you handle that one. Yeah, I, you know, I tend to be a little bit steeper with my wedge shots. I like to take a little bit of a divot, but part of that was because of the technique that I was taught growing up and the age I you know, back in the 60s. Thank you. You, you played a lot differently. 
okay, the ball was different. The ball was a lot spinnier. So I learned to play that way. I love higher bounce wedges for players that, hey, maybe your technique's not the best. Maybe you don't get a chance to practice. Maybe you throw these clubs in the car and pull them out once a month or once every two weeks. No practice time. Higher bounce is going to help you because you can go out there and you can just splash it in. Okay, why is bounce really important? The reason it's important is because you want to hit your wedge shots somewhere between the third and fourth groove. And if you notice, the third and fourth groove tends to be right where the meat of that wedge is. Okay, if you hit it lower, we've all hit them lower, that's the one that goes flying over the green. And you know, you're yelling, get down, because it's going out of bounds, it's going in the water, maybe in somebody's window. Okay? <laughs> and we've all hit the shots where it's you don't have enough bounce, it kind of sticks in the mud in the springtime, and you hit it up on the top of the face, and it looks like it's just a dying bird flying down to the ground, and it never gets there. That's because you hit it above the center of gravity. So the most important thing is to, for your technique is to find that wedge where you can consistently hit that third or fourth groove from the fairway shot so you can get yourself to hit consistent, spinning, consistent, flighted wedge shots. So, kind of to conclude, one of the things we want to talk about is we've got a bag full of wedges here. The Vokey line goes from, actually goes from 46 degrees all the way to 60 or 62 degrees. Callaway does about the same thing. TaylorMade has a lot of wedges. Ping has a lot of wedges. Why is there so many lofts? Well, you know, Danny can tell us, talk about a player who comes in, gets a new set of irons. We all know modern lofted irons have gotten stronger. This 50 degree wedge here, when I was growing up, and up till the 80s, a 50 degree golf club was considered a pitching wedge. Now it's considered a gap wedge. So things have, have slid a little bit. So why don't you tell us about a customer that comes in and how you would fit them for their gaps. Sure. So first and foremost, when we're talking about wedges, we want to see what the player has now. It's like Larry alluded to, modern technology is getting a little bit stronger, okay? We're trying to get the ball out there as far as possible, both from a ball standpoint and a club standpoint as well. So those pitching wedges, strong loft now, 43. Yep. 43. Right? Yep. So and when we start talking about gapping on the wedges, you know, a lot of those manufacturers now, we're going to have, you know, might be four more wedges in the bottom of the bag, depending on your, your short game, how you want to handle each wedge. That bag gets pretty heavy though, doesn't it? It does get very heavy. I mean, I had a high school kid yesterday who came in. He hit his, he hit his pitching wedge 160 yards. And he wasn't even swinging hard at it. Mm -hmm. You know, fit him, into a, fit him into a new set of Titleist T200s. He's going to go play with those for a few days. And then we're going to come back next week and do the wedges. Because more than likely, he's going to end up with five wedges in his golf bag. Because if you hit it 160 yards, now we got to cover 160 to zero. Mm -hmm. And we like to see 15, maybe 18 yard gaps in your wedges. I mean, if, you're, if they're any bigger than that, then you're really going to struggle. I mean, if you go from your pitching wedge to your, to your sand wedge or your pitching wedge to a gap wedge, and there's a 30 yard gap, that's a lot. You're asking a lot of your talent to try to cover those yardages. Okay, and especially if you're one of those guys that's once, once a month type player, you want to have something where we know, hey, if I've got 105 yards, I know it's my gap wedge or I know it's my pitching wedge. No matter how far you hit your pitching wedge, we want those good gaps in there so when you go play, you're not second guessing what you're doing. So the farther you hit it, the more wedges you're going to need. And especially, like I said about this high school player, it's big, but then we also get other players like myself. I don't hit it that far anymore. I mean, he was hitting four irons yesterday as far as I hit my driver. In fact, I think he out, could outdrive me with his four iron. I mean, so my gaps are a little bit different because I don't hit it that far off the tee. It's a little different when you hit it 340 versus 240. So that's why we spend a lot of time and it's in, 
some of the players kind of forget that we need to gap your set out. You know, the USGA says you can carry 14 clubs. Let's get the best 14 clubs in your golf bag that you can play with. And sometimes it's more wedges, sometimes it's not. But the more and more players we see and the more and more speed we see, these things have become much more important.